celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Welcome to this Young Turks special. We are in conversation with Deep Kalra of Make My Trip. Hello, as far as hotels are concerned, you mentioned that that's going to be a market that you're going to go uh, after. Sometime back I read that you'd launch something on the lines of the Airbnb of India. I don't know, at least that's what the report called it, right stay. Yeah. So talk us through uh, right stay. What do you hope to achieve with that? And because it's a crowded space now, so you have Trebo Fab Hotel that's uh, kind of doing uh, the Marriott version of what could be possible in India. You have Oyo Rooms uh, that's experimenting with something. Yeah. Uh, you have smaller startups, so guest houses and so on and so forth that are doing exactly what Airbnb is doing. Yeah, yeah. so firstly, right stay is about alternate accommodation. Uh, it's not about branding budget hotels, so that's a different space. And we do have My Value Plus and Go Stays in that. Mm -hmm. We are in that space. We think it's an interesting space. But right stay is actually the alternate accommodation stays. It's actually typically home stays. It could be while owners right there and there are a couple of rooms, it could be the whole house or it could oh. be the whole apartment. Airbnb. So, yeah, sure. So very similar and Airbnb has obviously done a phenomenal job of this internationally. Uh, we think the market is actually right for it and actually has been for a while. And reason being that we just don't have enough supply of hotel inventory in the market. So okay. if you go down into Coorg and Uti and places like that, the hotels are few. But the homestays are many. But with the number of players now tapping that, so for Airbnb doing that, sure. guest house are doing sure. it, uh, right stay doing it, sure. is it going to then become commoditized in that sense? And then how much money are you actually going to be able to make off that? Yeah, so I, I don't think so, Sina. I'll tell you why actually. The one that gets commoditized is where you're selling someone else's undifferentiated product. So you can argue an air ticket could get commoditized. There are six airlines and you know whoever sells it. But here you're selling a unique product. And the fact you've mentioned crowded space twice, I think uh, we for one are not at all uh, uh, worried about crowded spaces. I think we've, uh, we, we've managed to kind of stick in there and come out to be leaders in every segment we've been in. Uh, it's very simple. I mean, you know, we have a playbook. We're going to execute the hell out of it and, okay. you know, we're going to win in this segment. What are the kind of investments that we're looking into right stay specifically? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah. It's a big segment. It's a very exciting segment and we want to okay. play in it. It's a large, large market mm. and uh, you will, you're already seeing actually on both Make My Trip and Go Ibibo now, the homestay product is being actually interspersed with the hotel product. All right. Yeah. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is we spoke about NASPERS. Let's talk about Sea Trip in terms of synergies, in terms of whether they're just investing strategically into the company. Sure. Is there some sort of uh, longer term? No, you know, integration that might happen. Sure. Talk us through what's happening on the C trip side. Yeah, so we were really excited to get C trip on uh, as a shareholder. They came in as um, uh, in this was January 2016, and um, ever since they've actually been phenomenal partners. So we look up to C trip. What they built in China is fascinating. Uh, not only market leadership position, but then how they've navigated some of the big challenges, both first from Elong which was Expedia backed and then from Chunar and emerged as the number one leader and I mm. guess they're $26 billion in market cap ahead of Expedia. So it's interesting and all they do really is it's China. China. Yeah, it's a huge market. But more than that, it's how they execute. I've visited them multiple times. They've been pretty open. We've known them actually even pre-IPO and they were even keen to come in as an anchor in the IPO. At that time, we weren't okay. ready. All right. Yeah, and they've actually really, really strong on execution. So we've already had multiple sessions where there have been an exchange of ideas. We obviously have a lot to learn from them on the mobile side. Such as? So the mobile market there uh, is about 20x our size. So it's a totally different order. You know, we're still, like you said, 30, 40 million people buying out mm -hmm. here. I think China, we're talking about 300, 400 million, million. billion people actually buying. Scale of transactions is different. Most of it is all mobile. So most of it, I think we are learning. Mm. And they've been very open and very supportive. Um, and we really value that. Even mm. now, I mean, they, they came into the transaction. They didn't need to. The share price is much higher than when they came in. When they invested in January 2016, I think we're talking about a convertible. They came in at $16 to $19 price. All right. They've come in at 36 bucks. Yeah. So they obviously believe that the best is yet to come. I mean, no one otherwise comes in at a price. No investor comes in if they don't think it'll get even better. Correct. So there's a lot of validation of the confidence we have uh, by all of these investors. And 330 million is a lot of money. These are all seasoned investors. C-Trip's a strategic player. They're the second largest and most valuable 
and by brand again they'll be the second largest brand in the world uh, okay. for online travel after booking.com and that's huge so big validation okay. so is uh, make my trip at uh, some level going to become a sort of uh, agency for sea trip in india and i'm asking this in the context of what we are seeing play out uh, with the way alibaba is moving with paytm yeah. i mean i'm being very blunt about no, it no i appreciate it i i love blunt so uh, and i'll be equally blunt no uh, they're pretty clear that they want to invest and they want to partner and see what's happening just to share with you booking.com through priceline their hold co actually is a 10% share holder in sea trip and they have a board seat yeah so okay. it's pretty interesting okay uh, so technically booking.com has a 1% holding in us which is okay. 10% of 10% right. so uh, no i think they just want to be have a part of the uh, play here India market. they also do have the right to uh, to increase their thing i think they can go up by another 10 or percent if they want to so they do have that right all right yeah. okay so nasdaq on one hand uh, sea trip on the other blue chip funds in the us when you guys listed you all were at about 14 we listed 14 dollars 14 yeah. dollars 6 years 6 and a half years back at 40 dollars today and they've been i think 2015 was a slump uh while there've been some roller coaster moments i think 14 to 40 is a really nice uh, kind of return for mm. anyone and uh, it's worked out very well from a market cap point of view we listed at under half a billion 450 million sure. we had a great opening as you know but then even after that today i i guess the market cap and we try not to get carried away but it's about 3 and a half billion so it is about seven times of when we listed so it's been a good return for all our shareholders uh, and i tend to prioritize my uh, my team before shareholders you know wide in our approach and deep in our approach and give in awarding stock so a lot of the team gets covered and okay. they benefited and i don't think there's anything more fulfilling for an entrepreneur to see that happen mm, right. and then at the end of the day i think we are all serving the customer and and it's only because of the customer so the customer keeps coming back to us all of this happens because good customers don't leave for a dime or don't leave sure. don't go away for sure. you know 50 rupees or 100 rupees that's the customer who doesn't value quality and convenience and honestly we don't care that much about that customer we care about the top 50 60% of the customer mm-hmm. base there's always going to be a 20 30% of the customer base at the bottom who's a bargain hunter who's a price person which is fine you know we can't be 100% of a market we don't want to be mm-hmm. because that's obviously mm-hmm. not sustainable and not even possible there are no monopolies uh, left and shouldn't be okay one last question on a more general note on what we're seeing play out uh, in the e-commerce space mm-hmm. especially uh do you think some of these indian companies i mean just drawing from your experience waited too long to list i mean could that have been you yeah, know it's, they it's, would not been so dependent on uh, investor capital yeah, and you know yeah. so well, even, even investor if, overreach as well sure sure and i way. think i think that's well put see what happened over the last few years particularly last 3 4 years the private markets became really deep so you could keep going on being private without listing even if you look at uber and airbnb exactly. now they're exactly my point by far uh, being in the private space is easier easier because you know you can change strategies you can get away you haven't given guidance you know you can you can do sure. dramatically different things but it doesn't mean discipline that was my point actually yeah, so it cuts both ways but given the stage of the market mm-hmm. they're in i think they were very fortunate to have a lot of capital back then and and truly i think the better companies will still continue to do well you know i i don't get carried away and i keep telling people it doesn't matter whether someone's valuation is x or x plus 30% exactly. yeah but you know flipkart and ola and paytm they built really special companies i mean you know hats off to them they built great companies but then today it's all become global it's all seamless there's one world we are competing you know so i tell young entrepreneurs you're going to be competing with the best in the world yeah. don't think of my market is india and therefore i'm competing with just indian companies that's gone that's long gone and in the online space it's free for all it's free for all yeah. thank you very much deep for joining us thank, thank you Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.